What's up everybody, Liam here, a biology major at NDSU and I'm a current REU student working with Alexi and Crystal and today I'm here with my right hand man, Austin, a biochemistry major at NDSU and an REU student doing research with Hari. Today we will discuss sort of a controversial topic. No, it sure is Austin, that topic is sunscreen. You know, as a green chemistry student and a researcher, we are constantly looking for safer alternatives for not only our bodies, but the environment and looking at chemistry through the 12 principles of green chemistry, which highlight things like designing safer chemicals and pollution prevention. Hopefully today we can figure out some harmful chemicals and find out some safe alternatives to common sunscreens. All right, so the purpose of sunscreen is to protect a person against harmful UVA and UVB rays. UVA rays have a longer wavelength and represent 95% of the radiation that reach Earth's surface. These rays penetrate the skin, causing minor damage such as tanning and aging. UVB rays, on the other hand, have a shorter wavelength and make up 5% of the radiation that reach Earth's surface. These rays are more dangerous and are responsible for things like sunburns and cancer. Sunscreen has many different types of ingredients. There are active and inactive ingredients. Active ingredients pr protect wares from rays by absorbing or reflecting rays, and inactive ingredients provide texture, scents, and preservatives. First off, the most common sunscreens either come in an aerosol spray or lotions and gels. Sunscreen sp sprays can be inhaled and cause lung damage and, in some cases, cancer. Specific inorganic molecules that are in typical ingredients in spray sunscreens like titanium dioxide can cause serious damage if inhaled through the lungs. Typically, the rule is if you can smell it, the particles are likely entering your lungs in a similar manner to how secondhand smoke causes cancer. These spray-on sunscreens are also very flammable and harm the environment and wildlife due to chemical residue that isn't applied directly to the body. Not to mention, these sprays are less effective at protecting the skin from UV rays. But the spray aspect is very small scale and the ingredients that make up sunscreen are very harmful. The Environmental Working Group stated that three-fourths of sunscreens on the market contain worrisome ingredients. These harmful ingredients include oxybenzone, homosalate, avobenzone, and inorganic molecules like zinc, dioxide, and titanium oxide. The reason the application of these chemicals is of concern is because the skin can absorb these chemicals directly into the bloodstream. Once these chemicals are absorbed, the sunlight can react and cause even more significant damage. The FDA has run tests and concluded that even just after a single application, molecules can remain in the body for more than two weeks. Wow, that seems extremely dangerous, doesn't it? For real. The single most dangerous sunscreen ingredient is oxybenzone, according to research. This chemical is a known endocrine disruptor, is dangerous to pregnant women, and causes allergic skin reactions. In a study conducted by the CDC, adolescent boys with higher oxybenzone measurements found in their systems have significantly lower testosterone. Currently, this ingredient is banned in multiple countries. I guess if we're talking about the most harmful ingredients, I mean, we have to include homosalate. This compound is an, is an organic molecule that acts as a UV filter. It is very common in sunscreens in the U.S. and at even low concentrations, it can penetrate the skin and produce toxic uh, byproducts, which we do not want to go in our body. Yeah, I think our bodies have a lot on their plate already and disrupting these natural systems can cause immune issues and systematic problems. Avobenzene is another organic filter that offers protection from UVA rays. This molecule is extremely unstable which, chemically speaking, is not safe. Because it cannot exist by itself, it needs stabilizers that prevent its breakdown in the sun. These stabilizers cause allergic reactions in many different people. Yep, and just like oxybenzone, it is an endocrine disruptor. Some studies have shown that avobenzene uh, absorption is almost 10 times the FDA cutoff for safety. So Liam, I know we have mentioned it a couple times, but what exactly does it mean to be an endocrine disruptor? Well, the term endocrine just means through the bloodstream and specifically mentions the distribution of hormones. Our body produces hormones in response to bodily changes and it attempts to maintain homeostasis. And if these things get thrown off track, it can be extremely dangerous. Wow, seems like a pretty important system to be messing with. Mm -hmm, 100%. So, Austin, since we are discussing the green chemistry of sunscreen, are all sunscreens safe for the environment? <laughs> Absolutely not. Some of the harmful chemicals we mentioned also affect wildlife, especially coral reefs and marine life in oceanic environments. Yeah, I mean, we wonder where the sunscreen goes after jumping in the pool or in the lake. Like, I mean, it, it can't just disappear. 
Exactly. Most of the time, after significant water exposure, it just comes right off. Chemicals like octanoxate can cause coral bleaching. This is kind of like a domino effect. Yep. Once the coral reef is affected, so are all the organisms that live there, and so are the organisms that feed on those organisms, etc. A lot of organisms lay eggs in these environments and develop as well. Yeah, and not to mention the plastic containers sunscreens are kept in that can contribute to the plastic waste found in the ocean. Yep. So after everything we have learned today... I should just throw all my sunscreen in the trash, right? Now hold on, Liam. There are many alternatives and safer options for humans and the environment. Still, research backs up that the benefits of sunscreen provides outweigh the possible side effects. This decision starts at the store when picking up sunscreen. Yep, to start, mineral-based sunscreens are better. The FDA considers mineral-based chemicals like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide to be extremely safe and extremely effective. Uh, these cause uh, fewer skin reactions and do not get absorbed directly into the skin. These directly deflect light away from the body instead of absorbing it like the other chemicals do. For all those bios out there, you should also check if it's reef safe, which it usually says right on the bottle. Along with these, make sure that it is above SPF 30 and broad spectrum so you are protected from all rays. And like we said earlier, stay away from the sprays. So, my favorite sunscreen is Thrive Body Shield Sunscreen. It is a mineral-based sunscreen with an SPF above 50 and is reef-safe and chemical-safe. It is also water-resistant for almost an hour and a half. The plastic it's made of in the bottle, it's even recycled. Wow, I mean, we're not sponsored, by the way. Anyways, I typically go with Blue Lizard Sensitive Sunscreen myself. It's great great for my sensitive skin. It's fragrance-free. It's SPF 50+, plus, and it is mineral-based. Not to mention... It's sweat free. You know, Liam, we had a great conversation today. I really learned a lot. No, it truly was. And I hope our viewers today also learned a lot about sunscreen. All right, you guys. Tune in next time for more green chemistry education.